we have with us Muhammad Alif. He is Singapore's top esports racing driver. We talked to him last August, uh, right before he went off to university uh, in the U.S. And he is in the studio now with us. Alif, great to have you with us. Welcome. Yeah, amazing to be here finally in person with uh, all of you guys. Oh, it's wonderful to have you. We know you're shooting off later to do a 24-hour race before you head off back to the university. For the benefit of listeners who didn't hear you the first time you were on our show, just briefly tell us what your scholarship is and how you got it. So I'm a professional esports driver by career, and uh, I've received this esports scholarship. It is the first in the you know first ever that's being offered, um, offered by a renowned IndyCar team to Ball State University. So that's who I'm representing, both the teams, and uh, it's a four-year scholarship, uh, which I'm actually majoring in business analytics. This is just unreal. You are the first recipient of this, and uh, I, I would imagine there haven't been too many other Singaporeans getting such scholarships anywhere around the world. Uh, Ball State University, for the benefit of our listeners, is in Muncie, Indiana, about two hours from Chicago, about an hour from Indianapolis. And um, what's it been like to to be a Singaporean in the great Midwest in at Ball State University? It is not a place that most Singaporeans would have ever gone to. No, no, absolutely. I mean, it's been a really good eye-opener. You know, that's what I like to say. I mean, it's been really nice to be able to embrace the American culture, the Midwestern American culture, and, and the food and the people. Everyone's really nice, you know, in, in Indianapolis. So, I mean, that's been one of the main takeaways for me is, is how everyone's very open and, you know, always have a minute or two to, to chat and, and stuff yeah as a son of singapore you had to mention food so oh, yeah. tell us about the food what have you what have you maybe been surprised at or what have you enjoyed the most um surprisingly the junk food <laughs> at my school has been terrible so, <laughs> really <laughs> terrible yeah terrible so i've been forced to eat healthy food which, which is a good thing for yeah me. absolutely so, so, so yeah. what qualifies as healthy food for you so salads burritos that kind of stuff so okay. i've been, I've been going awesome. about that so yeah well america is home of the junk food <laughs> yeah. but uh, your scholarship and this is very important mm. it's called the rahal letterman lanagan racing scholarship now, those names are very important indeed and very impressive. For the benefit of our listeners, tell us who those names are so behind those, the scholarship. Those are the the, the 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 guys running the team. So David Letterman is um, Ball State's alumni. So he graduated like around the 70s, 60s. And a famous comedian yes. and TV personality. Yes. Yep, yep. Yes. those of you that um, remember him. And then uh, Mike Lanigan also is one of the, the team owners, part owners. And then... Letterman, Lanigan, Robbie oh, Rahal, Bobby Rahal. Oh my mm -hmm. God, that he's the 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 guy who has actually built the team from the ground up. So, so those are like the three kind of uh, founding fathers of the whole team that's uh, been doing really well in the IndyCar series. And they picked you for this scholarship. They could have taken anyone from around the world. I'm assuming it's uh, is it a four year scholarship? That's right. With yeah. a five figure sum annually, includes mm -hmm. subsidies for your school fees. Absolutely fantastic. What is it they were looking for? that they found in you? What is so special about you for the benefit of our listeners as an e-gamer? Interestingly, they weren't looking anywhere beyond America. So oh. when I wrote in, they were like, okay, we're going to make an exception for you because this, wow. because I was who they were um, looking for because of all the uh, all the competitions that I've won all along that I've been in the industry. So they were like, sure, we'll take you. From and what was it you had that they were looking for? So basically, I've been sim racing for 15 years now. So I've won about 40, 50 championships in total. So they kind of wanted that pedigree running the, the whole eSports team. And I recently got promoted as the team coach within hmm. my first two months. So I'm kind of just running the team now. <laughs> so and, and how many how many um, players are on the team? There are, we've just recruited two, three more, so it's eight in total now. Eight, yeah. okay. And so tell us, you know, I can imagine parents out there saying, okay, wait a minute, what's going on here? You got a four-year ride to study business analytics and be a, a professional racer, a gamer. Um, so how does that work? Like during during the course of the day or a week, how much are you gaming? How much are you studying? What, what does that all kind of look like? So first of first most, I'm there as a student. Firstly, yep. So my grades are very important yeah. to me, and then secondly is is the gaming part. So I clock about thirty hours a week of training um, in the sim. So I usually do that after my classes, you know, after a good meal, and then I I'm in the 
in the room on the sim that's the esports center right there which is amazing you know it's super huge huh. so it's like uh five hours a day kind of stuff yep wow, wow. five now, hours a day that's cynics a listening will say ah you're just being paid to play video games four hours training how hard is that what does the training for an e-gamer actually involve oh my god so many things because you really have to come up with ways to improve yourself as a driver you know that that means like going on different games mm. learning different techniques like drifting you know that's one of the things that you can learn to improve your what does that mean drifting, drifting means um it's like it's like losing control of your car oh, but then going around the corners going around the corners yeah, and then man. keeping the control of your car so in a way you're like practicing how to control the car in a more efficient way so that you can use it in your actual racing fantastic yeah. when when um when you guys are competing so what's in it for the university right how big of a deal is it for them to have an esports racing team and is it only racing or do they have other esports uh uh, athletes as well in doing other games besides racing oh yeah i mean there are tons there are like i think 50 players in total five zero five zero so wow. we've got valoran we've got league of legends you know we've got a multitude of games in there uh the whole floor is actually filled up with about 25 pcs huh. with like professional gaming stations that these guys can come in and what's in it for the university i mean we a ball state is the pioneers in the whole of America in terms of esports. Is that right? Yeah, so we are like the first like fully fledged program uh which are up and coming and then all the other universities are like, you know, following our footsteps and oh. looking at what we've done and they are building up their own own programs. So why is esports the program so important? Not only to Ball State but to generally is it I'm guessing it's not just to be a gamer, it's to learn about business and finance and marketing. I mean what does an esports program look like? The uh, the biggest part is actually uh, production, right. you know, broadcasting, because there are many, many competitions out there which need broadcasters, which mean which needs commentators, yeah. which needs professional, um, you know, mixing, sound mixing, a video mixing, that kind of stuff. So there's a mass comm element yeah. to it. Yeah, so they actually train, there. there is a proper, like, uh, a module around it, where they actually teach you how to, to do all these things, you know, how to set up all these things, how to run OBS, you know, that kind of stuff. And and it goes really really deep into the into the extent they actually we actually have our own uh, production in house for a lot of the competitions and it's really really interesting to watch. Fascinating. We are talking to Muhammad Alif, uh, son of Singapore. He is the captain of the esports racing team at Ball State University. He is the recipient of a four year ride to Ball State University, five five figures a year uh, in dollars. Um, he is studying business analytics and a, f and a full-time competitive racer online. And this just, if this isn't blowing a lot of people's minds right now who haven't heard of this before, it should be. Um, and I hope it's, I hope for all sports, not just for esports, but parents need to also realize that these are valid pathways for kids to get an education, mm -hmm. whether you're playing a, a team sport uh, on the turf somewhere or whether you're doing it virtually uh, as you are. What has been the biggest learning that you have had since as a racer, as an, as an e-gamer or e-racer since you've been there? What have you learned at Ball State that maybe you wouldn't have learned here while oh, being here? Um, just managing the whole education and racing aspect. I mean, I've been trying to balance that throughout my life. My yeah. parents put a big emphasis on on that, you know, just I have to be get, be able to get good grades and be able to race, you know. That's kind of been my uh, upbringing from, from, from when I was a kid. So I think balancing it more and more has been a, a big thing because, you know, you guys know that university. Send every college freshman who ever went away to school. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the distractions are a lot, you know, as, 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 you, it, as it is, so... So just trying to negate that and just steer away from that and just keep keep focused. I'm just curious, from the scholarship point of view, what is the criteria? Do they expect you to do well academically as well as in the in the competitions? You know, how is it weighted? You must finish in the top 20 of so many competitions and you must get certain grades. How, how does it work? So there's a minimum GPA that we have to right. uh, get, which is 3.0. Uh, I fortunately got a 4.0. Explain my business. that for non-American high oh, school so, folks. Oh, so 3.0 is basically a B minus. Right. So that's the minimum that we have to get um, with all our modules. 
um, to be in contention of the esports uh, scholarship. In terms of racing, you have to win races. You have to show progress. You have to show mostly is work ethic that I've actually put on my team to actually turn up, having good attitude, being able to learn, and eventually the championships will come. So when you say your team, just paint a picture for us. How many are there in this team, and and how do what, what does it actually involve? Do you delegate mm. who races what? You take part in this race or that race? How does it actually work? Your so job? it's a very hands-on process for mm. myself. So there are eight drivers, right? And we actually split between the road courses, which are the tracks that need require a lot of turns, and the oval races. So ovals are just like, you know, four corners, right? So we split between the two. I like to do both because I find it really fun to do both. So, uh, and a lot of it is done through coaching as well. So I like to do a lot of coaching with the drivers, you know, teach them um, telemetry, which is reading the data and 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 seeing how we can extract our performance more out of that. And uh, it's something that I enjoy, really. Fascinating. I mean, wow, really many, many kids take part in gaming. I know that Max does and many others. And I, I remember reading famously Lewis Hamilton, the Formula One driver, his father, and he knew by about the age of eight or nine that he had exceptional reflexes in go-karts and, and that kind of thing. When did you know, or, or did someone mm. tell you, that you're not just an average gamer? your hand-eye coordination, your reflexes are just at another level. When, when did that start to happen for you? I mean, I guess when my father brought me to my first road show, uh, which was in Changi Airport, actually, um, back in 2008. You know, when I got on the sim, I followed instructions very clearly, and I could make a lap without crashing. Hmm. And I was like, oh, you know, something that I like. And I, I <laughs> love, love cars from, from when I was a kid. So. And had you done any gaming before that? You had, right, at yeah, home? Yeah, only with uh, controllers. Right, right. So that was my first time with a wheel, and it was natural for me. So, yeah. Fantastic. What do you think? So you've talked about the ecosystem. Uh, you've talked announcers, and I would assume they do promoters and team uh, players and, and all this in addition to the gamers themselves. When you look at the future for this this industry it's multi-billion dollars already and set to get even more what, what do you think are the real job opportunities for somebody um okay we know they can be a gamer maybe a professional gamer what are some of the other interesting opportunities that could be for students who are in either in secondary school now or going on to tech some sort of tech school or going on to university um you know there's a lot of business opportunities that come out come along with this you know marketing is a, is a main thing because we do most of our, of our marketing through social media so being able to read what the people want content creation is a big thing nowadays you know you know um, shooting videos of our point of view that kind of stuff and uh yeah just being in the whole ecosystem being a manager i think uh, managers have become a big thing now you know managing and running the whole team and delegating how, how things go about. So you just don't, you don't have to be a gamer to be in the industry. That's the mm. thing. So there are many, many opportunities. Yeah. Out there. I mean, this is a hypothetical question, but do you see these kind of programs, these kinds of opportunities coming to Singapore at some point? Oh, for sure. It's already started. Actually. Right. Yeah, uh, they've already started to teach um, on the gaming side of things, uh, AI. So that's already in, uh, if I'm not wrong, there is, that is a course in uh, Tomasic Polytechnic. So Teach, teaching what elements? You so, say they're teaching gaming. Yeah. So uh, AI, so developing the games. Right. right. That's been uh, one of the biggest um, things with, which I've crossed over from Europe and America. So developing these using a, a, a different coding languages to actually develop these uh, pro, uh, these games, and then eventually being able to publish these. So that's a fabulous skill set. Yeah. Polytechnic level. Yeah computer coding, gaming, software. These are wonderful skill yeah, sets to take into any workplace. You know, this is the interesting thing. So many, many local schools, like you say, on the Singapore side are already doing it. Many of the international schools are, are uh, incorporating and now teaching and having, uh, having um, gaming stadiums built in. And, and it's not just about playing the game. It's about, as with any sport, the managers, the team owners, mm -hmm. the people who, who design and put on the promoters that put on the, uh, the competitions. Like the whole, the whole ecosystem is really fascinating to me. Um, the the sports commentators. Yes. It's great entertainment, first of all. So and, many people are just inclined to watch it. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you were saying, you were saying that um, you get tens of thousands watching uh, on YouTube and so on. Tell us a little bit about this upcoming 24-hour race you've got and how it will be streamed around the world. So this upcoming 24 hours is called the Virtual Le Mans 24 hours. 
it is mimicking the real life Le Mans, which happens in June. So it's actually happening tonight at 9 p.m. And I'm the only Singaporean representing the whole country in, in the race. Wow. You and hear so that? You're, He's you're... the only Singaporean represented. Let's get him watch him tonight. Exactly. 9 p.m. And so your team, there's other drivers on your team, you take a shift, right? That's how they do it in real Le Mans. Mm. That's right. So yeah. how long is your shift that you'll so, be driving? So um, every time I'm in the car, about two to three hours. Two to three hours. Stay con concentrated. And two to three hours in front of the, the, yeah, screen. the screen. No breaks at all. No, at all. Okay, how do you do that? What are your tips? What are your? So, I mean, you prepare for that. I've we've done practices for more than five six hours in front of the screen, so two to three hours becomes like a cakewalk for mm. us because of how inclined, how yeah. used to it it is for us. So it's like the same with you guys. You guys can be in front of the microphone, in front of the. A radio station for, for hours better or for worse so yes. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So some so would guys, argue we spend too much time in front of the microphone <laughs> the but yeah, out. Yeah. 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 so you guys get used to it the same <laughs> same with, uh, with us in, in front of this in front of the gaming mode you just can turn off your brain mm. and just let your instincts uh, uh, get and uh, maybe this is a silly question i don't know but i'm, I'm guessing do these reflexes hand-eye coordination does it apply to real life are you a good driver generally oh yeah do you drive in I'm, real I'm, life i'm sure I, you must be right i do i actually got an opportunity to drive a formula car in sapang which is in malaysia oh, that's and cool. i got within the fastest qualifying time that professional drivers within like two sessions <laughs> wow so it's actually a very smart did, question you, you didn't crash or anything no did you? i didn't i didn't I spun like once. <laughs> once, but, yeah, but that was on the wet, so it was. It was I mean, really is fun. that something you uh, would consider, or, or is the gap too wide between e gaming no, no, and the real definitely. thing? Definitely. I mean, I feel like e racing is the the only or one of the only ones, only esports which is can be transferred to real life. Right. Yeah. So there are many examples out there. One of them are, is a uh, Yan Mardenbro. He's a driver from Britain. So he's actually a champion in sim racing, yep. and he's made it to real life, and he's now a professional real life driver. Wow. So that's just proving that you can actually transfer. All right, Elite, if somebody does want to watch and be a spectator tonight on this 24-hour Le Mans race that you're in, how would they, how would they find it online? What, what would they, what would they, where would they go to? So it's actually very easy. You just have to go to YouTube and have to search up Virtual Le Mans. And YouTube, Virtual Le Mans. Virtual Le Mans, and it's, well, it'll be there. I'll try and po wow. post a link up later. Yeah. And just again, remind us, how many participants in this Le Mans race? Total, so there are about 60, 50 cars, and each car is like four drivers. Right, so, so 60, 200 drivers, 60 yeah. cars, 200 drivers, mm -hmm. and you are the only Singaporean. That's right. Fantastic. Awesome. Nine o'clock, get awesome. watching. Alif, we are so happy to finally have you in the studio. When the story first came up last year, we were just so impressed by it, and it was mm. great to have you online then. Um, thanks for coming in, especially you're, you're competing in the race. And then tomorrow you head right back to, to the U S to school That's right. to start your second semester. <laughs> yep. So we know that your time is precious. Thank you very much. You're, um, you, you've given us, given us all great insight. I'm sure making your family, your parents proud uh, and Singapore proud as well. Thank you very much. Cheers. And thank your dad for taking you to that race in Changi <laughs> airport. It changed history. It's fantastic. Yeah, it is Indeed. True. Thanks so much. Lee. Thank you. All the best to you. Good luck. Thank you. Singapore Homebrew on Money FM 89.3.